In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear fellow redeemed by the blood of Christ. What keeps you up at night? I'm not talking about living by a busy street and cars zooming past your bedroom window. I'm not talking about your neighbor's dog that barks at every wild animal that passes through its yard. I'm not talking about your neighbor's 4th of July when they shoot off fireworks into the wee hours of the night. But I'm talking about when all is quiet. When there are no distractions. When you are alone with your thoughts. that moment, what keeps you up at night? Is it your family? Is it something to do with your kids, such as their health, their future, or their newfound independence? Is it something to do with your parents, such as their health, their future, or their now dependence on other people? Is it a struggle in your marriage? your relationship with your extended family, or a situation that's always just lingering over your family whenever it gets together so that you're always tense, is that what's keeping you up at night? Or is it work? Is it the constant demands of your job that doesn't give you a day off even when you're home? Is it a toxic coworker that makes you dread going into work day after day? Is it a dead-end job? that makes you feel useless or worthless or stuck in a rut? Is that what keeps you up at night? Or is it guilt? Is it a sin that you committed which harmed someone else, a sin that you keep committing even though you try to fight against it every single day, a sin that no one else knows about, but deep down you know about it, and you know your God knows about it, and he should punish you for it. What else keeps you up at night when all is quiet and you're alone with your thoughts? I'm sure you can think of something, right? You see, over 75% of Americans report having stress at least once a week, and that number, number is much, much higher among teens and young adults. And so I'm sure that there has been a night where something is on your mind, where you are tossing and turning, where you can't shut your brain off and get some rest, or maybe it doesn't happen during the night, maybe it's during the day. Maybe it's when you're awake and you feel so much stress and it hinders your ability to work, your ability to learn, or your ability to be the family person that you want to be. And because you have all faced this stress at some time in your life, whether day or night, because at some time in your life your mind has been racing and you just can't turn it off and relax, I believe that's why these words of Jesus are just so familiar for you know the words of our text, right? Many of you have probably had them memorized your entire life. For these words are packed full of comfort. They give you such comfort throughout your life, but especially when you are full of stress, when your mind is racing and you just can't relax, these words bring such comfort into your heart. For listen to what Jesus says. He says, Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Yes, Jesus gives rest when you are wearied and burdened, when you are stressed out and full of anxiety. Jesus gives you rest. How? Well, notice what he says in the very first paragraph of our text. Oftentimes, we want to jump right to the familiar words, right? Come to me, you who are wearied and burdened, and I will give you rest. For those words are so packed full of comfort that we just want to jump right to them. But these words are spoken in context, and context is important. And so notice what Jesus says in the opening paragraph of these words in St. Matthew's Gospel. I think there's two things to note. 
First off, Jesus says he has hidden this truth of rest from clever and learned people and instead revealed it to little children. Now, this is not Jesus discriminating against people of seniors or of age, no. Instead, Jesus is saying that you can't figure out this truth of rest on your own. It's not about you gaining enough wisdom, becoming smart enough or learned enough, and then you can figure out how to receive rest. No, it's not about your intellect. He said the only way to receive rest is to trust, to trust like a little child. That's the first point Jesus is making. And the second point is that no one else can reveal this truth of rest to us except Jesus Christ. Only he can reveal that truth to us because only he can reveal exactly who the Father is and exactly what our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have done to win for us salvation. And since only Jesus can reveal that truth to us, since we can't find it in anyone else, that's why it is so essential to come to Jesus. And so how do we come to Jesus to receive rest? Well, contrary to popular opinion in this country, coming to Jesus is not you going to him. It's not you going on a search in order to find him the way that kids might play hide and seek. That would be terrifying. It'd be another burden on your shoulder. Instead, to understand what it means to come to Jesus, let's actually look at our Old Testament lesson to that story about Moses that we read from Exodus chapter 33. For in our Old Testament lesson, Moses was actually full of stress. He had been trying to lead the people of God, trying to get them to follow this law of God, which God had just given them on Mount Sinai, but things weren't going so well. The whole golden calf episode that we talked about last week, that had just happened. And so you can only imagine the stress that Moses had leading the people, the stress that would cause him to become angry or snap at the people during the day, the stress that would keep him up at night. Or can you imagine Moses tossing and turning as he's wondering, how in all the world am I supposed to lead these people to the promised land? Well, in this particular time, when Moses was full of stress, did you see what the Lord did? First, the Lord spoke a promise to him. He reassured him, my presence will go with you. What a comfort it is, for the Lord gives us that very same promise as well. But then when Moses demanded a little more, when he actually was bold enough to ask to see the Lord's glory, did you see what the Lord did? The Lord didn't come down and reveal his glory to Moses. That would have killed him. Instead, the Lord simply allowed Moses to see his backside. And when Moses saw the backside of the Lord, he was comforted, and all his stress was taken away. And do you know what? The exact same thing can happen to you today. For when you are full of stress and anxiety, tossing and turning because you're worrying about something that is on your mind, the Lord will come down to you as he did with Moses. And just like with Moses, he won't show you his glory. Remember, that would kill you. Instead, he shows you his backside. He shows you his backside by hiding his glory behind simple, ordinary elements. Simple, ordinary elements that don't scare you. That's what it means to see the backside of God. It means that God is present. He is here taking your stress and anxiety away and giving you rest. But God's glory is hidden from you. It's hiding behind simple, ordinary means that don't scare you or kill you. And let me explain what I mean. Take the person of Jesus Christ as an example. 
No one was scared to walk up to Jesus and to talk with him when he was living on this earth, even though he was 100% God. Why? Well, he was 100% God, but he was hiding his glory behind human flesh and blood. Human flesh and blood that looked as ordinary as ours. Or take the Holy Scriptures as an example. You're not scared of reading the scriptures or hearing them preached. I'm not scared of speaking them, even though they are the very words of God. Why? Well, God is present here, but he's hiding his glory behind simple, ordinary words that are just like all the other conversations we have throughout our lives. Or take the sacraments. You weren't scared to be baptized. You're not scared to come forward to receive Holy Communion even though God is physically present in that water or in the bread and wine. Because God is hiding his glory. All you see is simple, ordinary water. All you taste is simple, ordinary bread and wine. That's seeing the backside of God. God is present, but he's hiding his glory behind simple, ordinary means. And when God reveals himself to you in this way, when he allows you to see his backside, what happens? Well, just like Moses, your stress is taken away and you are filled with rest. For when you see the person of Jesus Christ, you see your perfect substitute. Your substitute who fulfilled the law in your place for you. Your substitute who died the death that you deserved for you. Your substitute who conquered death and took away all its powers by rising victoriously from the grave. And when God comes to you through the words of Holy Scripture, he implants himself inside of you and strengthens and nourishes your faith so that you can remain strong and cling to the promises of God no matter what struggles you are currently facing. When God appeared to you in the waters of baptism, he washed away all your sins and made you holy. And when he appears to you in, with, and under the bread and wine and places his very body and blood inside of your mouth, he unites himself to you and gives you life, life that will never end. Do you see how coming to Jesus to receive rest is not you going to him? It's not you searching for him and finding him, which would just add another stress and burden into your life. Instead, coming to Jesus is Jesus coming down to you. It's him coming down to you to show you his backside. It's him coming down to you in the person of Jesus Christ. It's him coming down to you through word and through sacrament so that he can be present in you to do such great things like give you forgiveness, like give you peace. And for our purposes today, whenever Jesus comes down to you in word and sacrament, he gives you rest no matter what stresses or anxieties are on your mind. For let's go back to what we were talking about at the beginning of this sermon. What does keep you up at night? What causes you to worry or be afraid or to toss and turn and not be able to turn off your brain? When that happens, think about where your mind is often focusing on. It might be focusing on yourself or your own abilities. It might be focusing on other people or their abilities. It might even be focusing on that present situation and how uncertain it is. But the majority of times, I think I can say this, when we are full of stress and tossing and turning, our minds are not focused on the one who can reveal truth to us the one who can give us rest. It's such a trick of Satan that he allows the cares and worries and anxieties of our life to crowd out our focus on the one who says, come to me, all you who are wearied and burdened, and I will give you rest. It's such a trick of Satan. And so my dear Christian friends, my encouragement for you today is to simply see the backside of God. 
especially when you are full of stress or anxiety or worry or doubt or fear or any of those other emotions, see the backside of God. See how God revealed himself to you in the person of Jesus Christ who died and rose for you. See how God comes to you through his holy word to strengthen and nourish your faith. See how he comes to you in the sacraments to forgive your sins and give you life. Yes, see the backside of God. For I promise you that no matter what stresses or anxieties are keeping you up at night when you can't turn off your brain, I promise you that when you see the backside of God, when your focus is on your Savior Jesus Christ and everything that he has done for you, especially winning for you the gift of eternal life in heaven, when your focus is on him, I promise you that then and only then will you be at complete rest. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please rise as we confess the one true faith about our God using the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed in the bulletin.